back again, uh, get my video blog on one more time. Um, the reason I wanted to bring this one up is because uh, I've seen a ton of content online with a lot of cool, the, you know, borderline social media celebrities and people that are empowering entrepreneurs, and I think it's amazing. Um, but I think there's right now there, there's not a lot of content around how, once you've started being an entrepreneur and now you're starting to grow your team. And uh, you know, I've mentioned a lot of times before that a lot of our clients give us feedback about. Uh, how awesome our team at Intri Media is and how much like great feedback we get about the experience people get with them in terms of you know being super nice and friendly and, and motivated and so every once in a while I get questions from people uh, around like how do you motivate your people to like do great work and uh, you know I think it's kind of a, an interesting question um, and so I'm gonna draw on a, a, a couple of stories but the, the first the first idea though in this is um, and it sounds kind of weird, but you don't. Um, when it's, how do you motivate people? You don't. Um, first of all, if you're if you're bringing on team members and you're struggling to figure out how to motivate them to do great work, well, then it's probably too late because you don't get paid enough to figure out how to motivate somebody. So, I mean, it seems really simple and kind of maybe crass right now, but my whole philosophy is find motivated people and hire them and then give them the path and the platform to maintain their motivation and do what they love to do. So that, that then breeds another question around, well, how do you go about doing that? And the reason I'm talking about stories earlier is I wanted to mention this piece by uh, Zappos, the co-founder of Zappos is Tony Shea. And he wrote a book called Delivering Happiness. Uh, it's a really great read. If you're into culture or you want to learn about how to grow, uh, how to grow businesses, uh, Delivering Happiness is a fantastic read. Um, at the end of the audio book, he, he's in an interview. And uh, if you've heard of Zappos or Tony Shea, you'll know that they're renowned for and globally known and recognized for their culture and it's kind of quirky and weird if you google uh, Zappos office and look at the images on Google images you'll see some crazy stuff because they're just quirky and weird and they're kind of fun like that's part of their culture but in the interview they the person asked them you know Tony you spend so much time uh, focused on culture and and creating a great culture what do you do to manage it and sustain it over time and uh, his answer was very similar to the one I had just talked about. And he says he doesn't. And they're like, well, what do you mean you don't? Like, you guys are just known for culture. You must be doing something around this, um, you know, sustainability management of your culture. And he's like, well, no, it's not true at all. All we do is we put a lot of effort into recruitment and we find people that have the same personal values as we have as company values. So that way we know when they're making decisions, they're already lined up with the way we operate. So I don't have to, or this is Tony saying, he doesn't have to manage culture or try to sustain culture. He, all he does is define the culture and then find other people that share those same values so that when they come in and make decisions, they're doing so in accordance to what's aligned with the company. And it's simple, but I think it's brilliant, and I find most brilliant ideas are simple. And so the same idea comes with um, hiring or how to motivate people. You don't. You find motivated people and then give them an opportunity to do what they love to do inside your four walls. So it sounds kind of crazy um, and it's a little counterintuitive, but the idea is stop trying to motivate people and just find motivated people to bring them inside your company. The, the best way to go about um, figuring out if uh, somebody is aligned with your company um, comes with the idea of articulating your purpose and your culture. So, you know, with Intrigue, our culture, of, uh, our purpose is empowering leaders and strengthening communities. Um, our cultural values uh, start with leading yourself, serving others, and inspiring. Um, under leading yourself, we have cultural values like do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. Um, swallow your frogs, do the tough things first. Uh, practice open and honest communication and have the tough conversations. And those are just some of the values that we have. So when we're recruiting, our purpose is forefront in our job postings. Our cultural values are completely upfront and, uh, and, and open in terms of you know, what we expect of our people and what we're trying to accomplish inside our company. And then when we, when we um, interview people and ask questions on the phone or when we're in person, we really use those cultural values as like check marks and indicators to say, are these people lined up with these values in the same way? And we ask for you know, situational-based questions that say, hey, give me an, uh, an example of a time where you were working with a client and something went really bad and you had to give them bad news and how you handled it. And, you know, if the response comes back with, well, the second I found out, I gave them a call right away and I knew they were going to be upset, but I figured there's no point in hiding it. 
And so I called them and told them what was up, and it turned out it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, and it ended up working out, and they actually built a lot of trust with me because I gave them the bad news. Well, that fits with our culture. And so now they're a candidate from a values perspective. Um, and then hopefully, you know, when you're looking at people, you're looking at, okay, give me an example of a time when you set a goal that was going to be difficult to achieve and you achieved it and what you did to make that happen. Now, that's a very, very important question. So I maybe said it too quickly right now. Uh, so I'll say it again. Um, give me an example of a time where you set a goal out for yourself that was going to be difficult to achieve and how you achieved it. And give them time to answer that question. And typically, somebody who is motivated will give you example after example relatively quickly on the type of goals they set for themselves and how they go about achieving it. That gives you some indication that they're motivated. And I used to also believe that uh, you know uh, grades in school and achievements on a resume um, weren't very important, but I gotta tell you, 10 years into it later, uh, I'd say they are really important because it's a track record of success. People that had 90s in school um, usually are motivated to get 90s in life and people that win on hockey teams or in wrestling championships or in spelling bees um, over time, they're winners. They want to win. They're motivated to win. And I think that's the key to motivating people. It's not about getting into their minds and motivating them. It's about finding people that are motivated and then giving them a platform to be successful. So I hope this helps. I know uh, there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are trying to grow their team. Uh, we're 10 years, almost 11 years deep, so I'm really just gonna be narrating and commenting on all the kind of things that we've gone through and the scar tissue we've built up so that maybe you don't have to make the same mistakes we did. So good luck out there, and if you have any questions or comments, just let me know below and I'll do my best to respond. Okay, thanks guys.